In this video, we're going to look at some data and begin the practice of descriptive statistics. And we're going to start doing descriptive statistics by making some summary tables and graphs. And the main idea we're going to focus on is the idea of a frequency distribution. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do a frequency distribution. And then we're going to graph the results of the frequency distribution and see what they tell us. So I'm going to look at one of my favorite data sets here, which is the 93 cars from the year 1993. 93 different models, and we have a lot of different variables here. And the first thing I want to do is make a frequency distribution for a categorical variable. And so let's look at one of these categorical variables here. Uh, for example, the type of car. Small, mid-size, compact, large, sporty, van, and a few other options perhaps. And I'm going to make a frequency distribution by using the pivot table tool in Excel. And the pivot table tool, it takes a while to get used to. It's just one of those things that you have to play with and not be afraid of it. Uh, there are a lot of different options and a lot of ways that you can mess up. But let me show you my way of doing a quick pivot table. Now I'm using Microsoft Excel 2007, but I'm going to do it the way you would do it in an older version by using the classic pivot table method. So in order, order to do a pivot table, the first step is have all of your data together in one data set with no spaces between rows or columns and you have to have variable names in the top row. If you have a blank in the top row it won't work. So once you have your data together just click anywhere inside the data. This is going to help Excel know which block of data that you want to use for your pivot table. So just click anywhere, you don't have to highlight all the data, and go to up at the top, let me drag this down here, insert, and then click pivot table. And after you click insert pivot table, you if you're using Excel 2007, you probably will not see what I'm seeing right here. Um, let me show you what you're going to see and at the same time I'll show you the options that you can set to help you out. Uh, you'll probably see the new version of the pivot table layout when you do this. If you do or if you want to try out the, the new version go to options and then under options go to display tab and you want to check classic pivot table layout and I am more used to the classic pivot table layout and so I always make sure this box is checked before I get started. Now if you don't have it checked you get something that looks very different and very fancy here but I haven't quite figured out how to use that yet. So we're going to use the classic pivot table. And let me show you how easy it is to make a frequency distribution where what a frequency distribution does is count up how frequently you see each category of a categorical variable. And the easy way to do this with um, type of car is just left click and drag type over here and drop it where it says drop row fields here. And that creates a list of all of the different categorical variables that it sees in your data set. And now if you left click and grab the same thing and drop it where it says drop data items here, it will count up how many compact, how many large, how many midsize, etc. there are in each category. And now you're done. You have a nice frequency distribution. Now of course if you were going to put this in a report you might want to highlight this. Don't highlight the top row count of type but highlight everything from the total up to the, um, the word type but not count of type. And you can hit control C and then you can go to a different tab. Let me readjust things here so I can go to a different tab. And you can hit control V and you can paste that table somewhere else. And then you can format and give it a better title, etc. Now I 
apologize. I, I lost my pivot table uh, tab there. So now you can go back to this pivot table and click in it and you can change these things. So for example, if you didn't want to do uh, to use type to make your pivot table, you can click and drag the word type out and um, drag the count of type out and you can start over. Uh, perhaps what we want to do instead is a frequency distribution on whether it's a domestic vehicle or not. So we can drag that to the row fields and then we could drag domestic to data items here also. And you see there's a problem. Now you always want to be familiar with your data before you start this. By default if you're working with a pivot table what Excel wants to do if it's a number is add them up if it's a word, it will count them up. So if it's a word, it will count them. That's what you want in a frequency distribution. If it's a number, it wants to add them up. And since this variable for whether it's a domestic car or not is a number, even though it's a categorical variable, Excel is adding up the zeros to get zero. It's not counting them up. And if you put your cursor over this, it says sum of one equals domestic. It's adding up the values here. Now, there are a lot of options you can change, and if you ever have this kind of problem, or if you want it to count instead of add, right-click, and we can go to Field Settings, and um, it's not letting me change this. Hold on. Let me see what's going on here. Field Settings. Custom. Okay. And... Instead of sum, which is the default, we're going to count. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble with this. And one part is, as I said, uh, pivot tables can be annoying. And I'm not going to edit this. I'm going to let it roll. What I did wrong was, instead of right-clicking where it's actually counting it up, I right-clicked over here um, where the variable names were. And so it is frustrating. I want you to learn from my mistakes. So right click on the total here and go to value field settings. And that's where you go count. So you always want to make sure that this total of observations is 93 because in this data set we do have 93 observations. So you want to double check your own work and never assume that Excel is doing what you think that it is doing. So this is a simple frequency distribution. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, actually change this back to what we had originally with the type of car, just to show you how easy it is, and then we're going to make a graph. So type of car, and drag type of car here so it counts it up, and we can just highlight this data and make a graph. And in Excel 2007, if you want to make a graph, let me actually do this. You know, on second thought, let's go to where we pasted that table. I don't like to make graphs from the pivot table uh, page because then if you change the pivot table, it's going to change your graph. So it's another reason for copying and pasting. So we can come over here and uh, we can make a couple different kinds of graphs pretty quickly. We can make a bar graph where insert column and just this first clustered column uh, idea is fine and we've got a bar graph and I want you to notice that we did not graph the grand total you never want to include that in a bar graph like this um, it just makes everything look out of proportion and it's not really necessary and one thing I always do with Excel graphs if there's only one type of bar is to click the legend over here and delete it because it's just an unnecessary waste of space. And so we have a bar graph here and we can see that the most the two most common uh, types of cars are the midsize and small in this data set. Now you probably also want to click up here, double click and um, hit the delete key and type a, a better title, you know, like types of cars, something like that. You might also want to label the X and the Y axis, and the easiest way to do that is to go to 
layout axis titles and primary horizontal axis title and vertical. I'll do a horizontal axis title, title below axis, and um, then just click in here and edit that. So, and you can do the same thing with the other title. Now, let's go back to our um, pivot table here and show you a couple other things you can do. You don't have to just make a simple frequency distribution here. You can also add, let me uh, go back and start over here. We can, after we drag in the row fields, you see this column field indicator here. So what we could do is drag in the idea, is it a domestic car or not? And then drag type into drop data items here. And now we have a kind of table that's called a cross tabulation. It's got one variable along the rows and one a different variable along the columns. And so you can see how do types of cars vary whether they're a domestic or an import car. And so for example here the 14 tells us that there are 14 cars that are both small and domestic cars for example. Now another kind of graph we could insert in here to give us a similar kind of view for a qualitative or categorical kind of variable is a pie chart. So we can do it similar sort of way here insert pi and we're done. But you always do want to take a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes to make sure that your graph actually helps people understand what's going on. And so a couple of changes here again you might want to give your graph an informative title and you might want to add percents or, or labels in this graph here. And so we can, for example, in um, a pie graph, you can try, go to quick layout here. And one of the options on the quick layout is to add those names of the um, different categories and add the percentages to the pieces of pie. And I think for this particular graph, this makes it a little easier to understand. And I always like to see the percentages in a um, pie graph or the counts just like you can in a bar graph. You want to be able to read off of the bar graph or the pie graph where these bars came from and what they mean. So I'm going to end this video here and then I'm going to make a second video where we look at how you do a similar kind of process with quantitative data.